Aloha, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Habitual Cosmic Review of the Full Moon in Leo. I am excited for this one. I am a Leo sun. This is one of my favorite moons of the year. It just gets really into that primal Leonine energy. Um, I did do the Tarot for the moon yesterday, and those turned out fantastic. I'm so excited. They should be up on YouTube in the coming days. So very, very interesting, very cool energy that we are playing with. Hello, Heather, Leo Sun there too. Awesome. Good to see you here. Um, as a reminder, this is intended to be active and engaging. Definitely not a spectator sport. Heather understands the assignment. I love it. So while I do some housekeeping, feel free to put your location in the chat and then get your natal chart handy. And for those of you that will be watching on YouTube later on when it's posted live there, you can feel free to leave any comments. So some housekeeping items. First off, starting from this moon forward, I will be posting these recordings onto YouTube the day before the actual moon or the month occurs. Typically, I do it right after the event. I'm switching that up. So the only way to get this info ahead of time is to register via Crowdcast. Now, registering via Crowdcast does not mean that you have to attend live. That's why I chose Crowdcast as the platform. Um, it just means that you have access to it. So you can come back to Crowdcast if the time didn't work with your calendar and watch it even after the um, the live Crowdcast has completed. So that's the great thing about registering. This just allows you to prepare a little bit earlier for the moon and for the energies that you might be experiencing. Um, all Crowdcast events are up for February and March. So you can go ahead and register, get those on your calendar, get reminders, get updates, etc. And then the date and time of all the charts and the moons and everything that I use are for my location here on the islands of Hawaii. So for example, this full moon in Leo is at 28 degrees from my location on February 16th at 6.57 a.m. Hawaii Stein Standard Time. So you'll wanna make sure to do the appropriate calculations. So let's get started. Make sure you got natal charts and you've got um, Excellent. Thank you, Heather. Orange County showing up. I love that. Um, so right now until March, you're two hours. So this would actually be 6, 7, 8, 57 a.m. your time, your local time. So in the most truest Leo fashion that this moon could come out in, the story of this moon literally has nothing to do with this moon. Yet the story couldn't unfold without it. And if that's not Leo energy, I don't know what is. Um, we're really, this moon is sitting at this higher vibratory energy signature of Leo that says, I know and see the value of who I am. I know what I am worth and I know how to be seen. And that's really going to be a big signature of this moon. It's really, though, the surrounding stories that allow this moon to truly illuminate and shine outwards. Whoa, that just went a little crazy. Sorry about that. Let's go back right there. Um, so it was like when I was sitting down with this moon, there was this really key knowledge point that this moment in time the universe has really given us this creative and really imperative storyline that it wants to share with us, but the only container that could hold it was the full moon in Leo. So again, the universe is always working for us. It's it The synchronicities are so amazing. And it's really within the Leo lens that we see these gifts and interpret the stories of the other planets that are having these aspects, that are having these conversations. And we have to be able to look at them through the lens of Leo, even though this moon is the only thing that's in the sign of Leo. That's how powerful this energy is. So I wanted to start with the aspects, and then we'll talk about the Leo lens and view the aspects through that lens. 
So the aspects for this moon is this moon is squaring both of our nodes, the north node and the south node. And then Pluto is still conjunct Mercury at this time and is trining the north node. Now, Mercury and Pluto are in a much looser conjunction. They just went exact as of yesterday. Um, so they are separating from each other, but the energies are still rubbing off on each other. Um, we have the sun in Aquarius and the moon in Leo at 28 degrees. That's what causes the full moon, that those opposing um, degree points. The north node is in Taurus at 27 degrees. That is, again, a Palladian degree point. We talked about that in the last moon. And then the south node is in Scorpio at 27 degrees. And Pluto is in Capricorn at 27 degrees, 26 minutes. Days. We are days away from the February 22nd Pluto return for the United States, the first one of three, the exact return. So there's a lot of energy just in that first bucket alone. But that's not all that's happening. We have Mars conjunct Venus. Mars is in Capricorn at 16 degrees, 58 minutes. Venus is in Capricorn at 16 degrees, 57 minutes. And then on top of all of that, Jupiter is sextiling Uranus. So Jupiter in Pisces at 10 degrees, 55 minutes, and Uranus at Taurus, which when I pulled this, I was so delighted to see that Taurus was at 11 degrees, 11 minutes. So if you're into numerology and divine numbers, angelic numbers, 1111, great portal energy. We're in the midst of an open portal right now with Palladian degree points and the Palladian energy coming in. So all the synchronicities are just happening right as they should be. So let's transition now to look at the lenses of Leo and we'll take some of those aspects that we just talked about and apply them to these lenses. So the three lenses of Leo that we can use to filter these conversations are primal nature, fuel, and center. And each one of these are key to Leonine energy. Primal nature, so a lot about this moon is this concept of adventure and curiosity and creativity and how you use those in order to create the life that you're living and the life that you're cre like actively co-creating with the universe to bring you forward into whatever you are manifesting. At its core, Leo is an incredibly primal sign. It connects us back to those primal parts of ourselves that understand very, very, very clearly that we are the center of our universe. I am the center of my universe. Heather, you are the center of your universe. And that's that primal nature. I am me, but there are a lot of me's that make up me. Right. We have so many different viewpoints of ourselves, so many different ways that we co-create and make ourselves. It's this kind of just primal like, hey, even it's glyph, like look at the glyph of Leo. It's got that circle with the little tail on it. The glyph and its representation, the lion, that is primal. This glyph in Leo ties to things that are not human or not of the fantasy world. It truly does tie to primal nature. There is an instinct about Leo. So even if you're, even if you cage a lion or train a lion, it's still a lion. And we've seen that over and over again, right? Like throughout, um, throughout, I know, like my history with seeing things that happen in Vegas with with um, lion tamers and then the, you know, circuses and all of that. You can train and you can cage a lion all you want. It still doesn't change its primal aspect. It still does not change the fact that it's a lion. Just as we are all still humans, even if we ourselves have been caged and trained, we're still humans. We still have primal nature. And that is truly one of the biggest gifts of Leo. We have this primal place that we can tap into if we are willing to go there and in a way that only we know how. 
and how it's right for us. So these are some of the questions that you can ask yourself. Um, you know, where have we kept ourselves in a cage? Where have I kept myself caged? Where has our impulses to do something been, but we've told ourselves we can't? So like I've always said I want to write this blog or this book and I've never done it. I've never even put pen to paper. It's just always been in the back of my mind and every now and again it pops up. Why haven't I done it yet? And this is what this full moon in Leo and all of these conversations, this Pluto nodal mixture we have going on, this and this Jupiter and Uranus conversation, the sextile, this is where we can start to play into some of that, get creative with it. Um, you know, what are the larger ways we can invent, be curious, we can tap in and create flow from a very primal state. And that is that Pluto, excuse me, nodal mix again, and then that Jupiter trying Uranus. So this is one core signature area of a conversation that's going on. Um, exactly, Heather. I love that. Absolutely always shining. Can't stop our nature. Absolutely not. This is this is the gift of Leo. This is why Leo's right where it needs to be within the zodiac wheel. Next up, we have fuel. So Leo is all about the performance of life. We have to perform in order to live. Even waking up takes energy. There's fuel that's needed to continue on your journey. Um, fire takes air and fuel to burn. So the one thing with Leo and, and fire signs is, yes, fire signs, it's like the passion and everything, but it's really important to notate that fire is also a mental energy signature. It does take air to burn. So there is a physical and mental aspect to Leo that we don't want to forget about. It takes a lot of energy a lot of energy to keep exerting and emoting. You know, like Leo, they normally get that like, you guys are just so big. You don't mind being on stage. You don't mind like grand grandeur and leadership and, and all of these great things. And you've got all this courage that it takes a lot of fuel to continue to do that and show up day in and day out. Its ruler is the sun. That, the sun itself is an energy signature. It's also an energy that is finite. Now, the sun's probably going to burn way longer than I'll be alive or maybe even parts of my lineage, but it is finite. It has its own fuel that it uses in order to shine the way that it shines for us and keeps burning. So the questions here are, where does your fuel come from? Leo also rules the heart and the solar plexus. So what fuels your soul? What fuels the, you know, that and gives you that nourishment that lights your fire up inside of you? And this is where Mars and Venus are coming in from. So this is the conversation that Mars and Venus are carrying not only through Capricorn, but then into Aquarius as well as they very closely conjunct all the way through this journey. Um, it is the, you know, it's this, this meeting of Mars and Venus is meant to keep us nourished and not drained. Um, yes, if you're too much in your Mars energy, too much in that action, you could get drained very easily. If you're too much on the receptive side, you could not sleep very well because you're just so open to just hearing, listening, and allowing things to flow through you. That is also non-fueling to what you need to do. And where in your life are you drained of your resources? And how do you, instead of being drained, how do you change that to nourishment? How do you find your nourishment? And that is another lens and a part of this conversation um, that we need to think through. And one of the things that I noticed over the course of this week, and as we get closer to this moon, I'm being very called to like, you need to stop work. You need to put down everything and you need to spend a day out in the sunshine, 
out, you know, near the water or go for a ride or go hiking, um, just coming back and just allowing yourself that space to recharge and reset, to refuel yourself. And then the last lens of Leo is the center. So Leonine energy radiates from the center of everything. So it is, that's why it's the heart and the solar plexus. That's the center of the body. Um, the sun is the center of our known solar system where we reside on earth. And it's this energy signature that starts from a focal point in the center and then radiates outward. That is Leo energy. And um, it's really understanding the power that you have by being authentic to your center. Grounded. Come back to you. Again, you are the center of your universe. Come back to you. Center in with you. And then allow yourself through you standing in your authentic power to radiate outwards. Even going back to the primal nature, right? I am the center of my universe. It starts with you, but then again, it is not only about you. But it is through you that all things are possible. Through you standing in your power, being in your power, it's um, you have more impact than you know. Whoa. Apparently, we're getting some work done outside, so I apologize if you can hear that. Um, Alan Watts stated, stay in the center and you will be ready to move in any direction. And I just, I loved that quote. In fact, I saw that quote after I had already kind of dove into everything. And I'm like, well, that's, that's being brought. <laughs> we are stating that quote. So let me repeat it again. Alan Watts, stay in the center and you will be ready to move in any direction. So as we look at the conversations that the nodes are having, it's about the cultivation of yourself in this physical life. Taurus, earth energy. How do you show up on the earth? How do you show up for yourself? So some questions that we can ask here are, how do you ground and come back to yourself? Where are you off balance? Where are your thoughts, conversations, and connections? And these are your thoughts, your conversations with yourself and with others, and the connections that you make with other people and with the surround, you know, even your surroundings, any energy signature, your home, all of those things are up for grabs here that support you in coming back to your center and being in that central power so next up, just to wrap up again, because I really did, like, these are the three key mantras of this moon. I wanted to put them um, on a slide and kind of repeat them again. I know and see the value of who I am. I know what I am worth. I know how to be seen. We can just, that that is some Leo, breathe that in. And it's really, truly, too, not about just being able to say it, but know how and why you incorporate this into your life. How do you see the value of who you are? Why is that so important to you? What do, how do you show the world what you're worth? How are you seen? Why is that important? And kind of just really dig in because it's not about just saying the words. It's about truly connecting to them and seeing how you use them within your life and in the physical world. Heading over to the chart of the moon. So all the glyphs are on this right-hand side. With the exception of Pluto, this is the only glyph I could find of Pluto from the keyboard perspective. But Pluto in this chart is actually right here. And this is the glyph that they use for Pluto. They're interchangeable, but just so that way, if you are watching this, that is where you will find Pluto. But here are the glyphs. And this is the beautiful chart of the moon. Again, here's that awesome Uranus at 1111. Couldn't, 
couldn't have planned that better. Thank you, universe. So this is where you want to take out your natal chart if you have it and start to identify where 28 degrees of Aquarius, which is right here, that's the sun, and 28 degrees of Leo, that's the glyph for Leo, here is the moon, um, where those are in your natal chart. This is a Leo moon and the focus is on the moon. The moon does rule this time. Um, it is nice to know though where the sun is illuminating for you, where things, um, you know, there's always that access point. You could be dealing with two energies. So for me, I am a third house Leo or a second house Leo if you use um, whole house signs. So it just depends upon what modality you use, but you're going to want to look for that 28 degree point because the 28 degree point for me actually falls into a different house than my primary Leo energies. It's like right over that line on the houses. So this will be the focal point of the moon and you can use those themes to see how these lenses might show up for you. So for example, third house Leo, that's going to be in the house of communication. So when I'm looking at some of these lenses of, you know, primal nature, fuel, center, um, and some of those questions asked, it could be a lot about how I speak up for myself, the words that I choose to use to describe who I am and what I do, the words I use in my own brain to talk to myself and where that's been coming up for me, how that's been changing. So that's how you can really use your natal chart to play with the moon. And um, again, it's do you see the value of who you are, what you are worth, and how you are seen with these things? themes through the lens of primal nature, fuel, and center. Now the orb for this moon is anywhere from 22 to 29 degrees. That's how I personally work with orbs. If you work with orbs differently, absolutely feel free to expand or contract as needed. For myself, I look from anywhere from 22 degrees to 29 degrees. And you're looking for any planets or points within this orb in the fixed signs of Taurus, which is right down here, um, Leo, which is where the moon is, Scorpio, which is up here in this chart. This is the glyph for Scorpio. And then Aquarius, which is where the sun is. So if you have any planets or points between 22 and 29 degrees of any of the fixed signs, um, this is really, this moon can really be pinging and, and felt more um, energetically through fixed signs. And it's a way to see something and connect to what you need to keep going. There, This moon is really um, highlighting like, hey, you're... Maybe you're feeling like, hey, I've got, I need to take this to the next step, or I've been super diligently putting in the work, and I I feel like I'm at a space where I'm just not sure what the next step is. I am i don't know where to go, or I'm just going to keep trucking along, but is this really the right thing? Do I really need to keep going this direction? And this moon is going to open up and illuminate bring to sight, bring to awareness something that can connect you with what is needed for your next step. Um, and then there's a lot for fixed signs about what are you doing in this moon that is not just for you, but how does that incorporate to others, right? We've got the sun in Aquarius, we have Saturn in Aquarius, we're about ready to get into Pisces season. And this is that transitionary phase of understanding what we do and what we do has an effect on the world. So yes, we are the center of our universe, but it is through that that the world is also, um, you know, supported, energetically supported. Um, again, you you never know who you're influencing. You never know who's watching. You never know how you're showing up could motivate somebody to show up for themselves and start on their journey of healing, of growth, of thriving. So it's it's one of those moments where honing in on that Leo energy of being center stage and of being seen can be really impactful to more than just you. 
And then um, one other thing is this moon, again, it's a lot about some of these other conversations. So I do, and I have been really encouraged myself to look at what I've been going through, what lessons I've been, have been presenting for myself over this January and up to this point of the moon. But especially in January, as Venus has gone retrograde in Capricorn, as Mercury has gone retrograde, Capricorn Aquarius, I should say Aquarius Capricorn since it started in Aquarius and, and retrograded back. Um, how Pluto's been working with me in January, as well as um, how these nodal shifts that occurred in January. What are some of the things that like kind of taking stock almost of all things that have been happening and seeing how they like a puzzle, seeing how they all connect together, seeing how each little thing that I'm going through is taking me in the direction that I'm going. Or um, again, maybe that, maybe in just that simple thing of putting these puzzle pieces together, that's where that veil is lifted and you see oh, I get this connection point now. That's what I need to go forward. I get it. So I have, for my personal self, I have been called to kind of really look into that. So that might resonate with somebody else out there. So I just did want to um, bring that up that, again, as we kind of go through all of these energies and work with these energies, um, there's a lot happening out there. And that's, and, and, that's okay. That's by design. This is happening for us. It's not happening to us. So um, we are all doing work together. All right. That is all I had. Let me get to here. That's all I had for this full moon. This is the energy signatures. And let me go ahead and unfocus here. This, this is it. I am so excited for this moon again. The tarot readings will be up shortly. Um, they were wild. It, <laughs> it was a whole vibe as Leo should be. Um, but definitely keep in touch. Make sure to follow on Crowdcast. Register for any future ones. And then if you think somebody else would find value, feel free to share with your network. Um, I really appreciate everybody joining me. I will have two live workshops in March that you can register for now. We'll be going over and diving deep into planets and then also another one for planets and Orishas. And um, our next event for the moon will be February 26 for the new moon in Pisces. And then we'll have um, the March following that the very next day. So the QR code that you see on your screen will take you to all things Habitual Sages so you can keep in touch. Find me on the socials and on YouTube. And Heather, thank you so much for joining me. Mahalo, everyone. See you later. Bye.